Alrighty guys, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to be replacing the battery on this iPod Nano 5th gen. It's actually in really good condition considering that this thing is probably around 16 years old. I found this guy on eBay when I was on vacation and uh, even though it's a little bit on the expensive side, I just figured that it's worth the price because of just how good this thing looks. So I got the iPod check, I got the battery, and I got the glue. That and some soldering and we should be good to go. So just gonna set the iPod to the side here and uh, this is the battery that we will be using. It's looking pretty nice in its anti-static wrapping. And right here you can see these are the pads that are gonna need to be soldered to the motherboard. The capacity of this battery is actually 250 milliamp hours. It really is crazy to think that a battery can be engineered this thin. One thing I am noticing is there's a little bit of wear on the finish. I'm gonna see if I can get it off, but if not, it's all good. And all right, so I switched out the iPad for a notepad just to make it a little bit more level. And I'm just going to gently pry up on the bottom plastic cover. You want to try and do this as carefully as possible so that the plastic piece doesn't break. Looking good. The screws are still there, which means that this thing probably hasn't been opened before, but we can take a better look inside. And I'm just going to take some isopropyl alcohol and clean up any residue from the adhesive that was still left. And then I'm just going to do the plastic piece as well to just get everything off, make it super clean. Very nice, very nice. And then once we're done with that, we're just going to move to the top. Got to be careful of this hold switch that's at the top of the iPod. This is very, very delicate. You don't want to mess with that. Even though it's just a connector piece, still want to keep that intact. And this is the piece. It's pretty cool. The dial is very shiny. Just going to scrub these guys as well. And then we're going to start by removing the screws. So those are the screws. Super easy. And we're just going to keep track of those. And then we're going to move to the bottom and do the exact same thing. There's three here. One on the left, one on the right, and then there's also one in the middle for the 30 pin casing. So you'll want to get that out as well. Now just going back up to the top here, we have the hold switch and its casing. And we're just going to remove it so it has two screws on each side. keep track of those guys and it's free so there's going to be some adhesive but we can wipe that off later go and flip flop here but back down to the bottom we're going to remove the 30 pin casing just gently pry up on it and there we go pretty neat and all right so the wheel is pretty easy to remove you just want something thin to pry into where the casing was for the 30 pin. Just gently push up on the white plastic piece and then remove your prying tool so that the entire thing can come free. I wouldn't try and manhandle it or else you could risk snapping the white plastic piece. So yeah, just gently pry up and then you're going to see that connector there. You're just going to take your plastic tool and just gently pry up on the connector. As you can see, there's very important components in here, so just be careful where your spudger is going. And there's going to be that black piece with the spring in it. Those will come loose, so you'll want to keep track of those. Alright, so now we'll move on to the screen. It's a little bit dirty, but we can clean that later. It's all good. Just now put your suction cup onto it and pry up. It might take a little bit of force, but don't worry, you're not going to harm anything. Just be careful that you're not going to fling the glass once it does come free. You might have to use a spudger if the adhesive is still really good which I'm not sure how it's this good after almost 20 years, but you'll just want to gently slice it. The glass can be cleaned afterwards, so no worries if you mark up the inside a little bit. It is free. That is the glass piece, it's pretty cool, and a very, very clean display, so this obviously has not been opened before. So we're just going to also remove the pin from the camera. There's a white little pin back there that you'll want to remove. So you're just going to take the same needle that you used for the cover and just pry up. And there we go. So now just push the iPod out of the casing and don't use too much force or you could kill some of the pixels. but you want to use enough and there's a little bit of adhesive behind the battery that's uh, attached to the case so you just want to be careful as careful as possible 
and there we go so I'm just noticing that there's a lot of adhesive residue so I'm gonna remove that with the alcohol again and gently slide out the iPod from the casing and just be careful of the lock switch because it can get stuck really easily awesome Just gonna scrub that as best as I can. Just rub the rest. All right, great. So now everything's out and uh, it's looking really clean and really good. So here is the back of the iPod out of the case. You can see the battery. It's a little bit puffy, but honestly not too bad. You can see right here that there's a little bit of corrosion around some of the connections. And my soldering iron was taking way too long to heat up. And so I did not press play on the record again. But if you were using this video as a means to repair your iPod yourself, just simply follow the steps backwards. So I put the click wheel back into the frame before I put the 30 pin connector housing back in because that is what keeps the click wheel in place. There's also a few places in the metal frame when you put the click wheel back in, you'll want to clean up the excess glue and add some more. But as you can see, it's working pretty good. And the guy I bought it from had some songs already loaded up on it, so just testing that out with the headphones. I gotta say, this click wheel is so cool, man. It really feels like Apple went backwards when they introduced the iPod Nano 6 and even the 7. The touchscreens on the newer models are really cool, but uh, the features that are on the older one are really cool too. And that is the 7th gen compared to the 5th gen Nano. And again, the 5th gen just has so much more to it than the 7th, in my opinion. I mean, sure the 7th gen has a touchscreen, but this thing had a camera, it had a mic built in, voice memos, notes application, it even had a few games installed camera is pretty neat the quality is uh, interesting but uh, just the fact that it has a camera is so cool man and so yeah I took it out the following day and this is some of the video that I recorded cover flow is really great the games are awesome I think with the 7th gen nano, Apple really just wanted to market the thinness of the device plus the lightning port. And they were already selling iPhones and iPod touches, so the features that they put in the 5th gen didn't really make sense anymore. And yeah, this was my first video on this YouTube channel, so if you liked this little battery repair video that I did, please give it a like and subscribe. Hope to see you in the next video.